Hey everybody, this is Joe Price. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing how to create giant logic gates. Terraria 131 has brought with it a number of basic logic gates, although basic logic gates have just one output line, whereas the giant logic gates that we're going to be presenting today allow you to generate a large number of output lines. Uh, specifically, for each X number of inputs, we can generate a maximum of 2 to the power of X number of outputs. Now, to understand giant logic gates, we'll have to look at the individual units within them. The individual units are basically uh, junction boxes, which I'll be referring to as nodes. So the basic gist of the uh, giant logic gates is that we're going to create a branching process. A signal will initiate at one of the nodes and it'll take one of two possible paths. Uh, whichever path is uh, taken, it'll arrive at some other node and at that other node, again, a decision is going to be made which one of two paths is going to be taken. So let's take a look at these nodes and how they operate exactly. So the nodes are comprised of two side-by-side -side AND gates. Now, just a quick refresher of how AND gates function. Uh, and by the way, the AND gates is just the box and uh, the two lamps directly above it. So for the AND gate to actually send a signal, it requires that both of the lamps be turned on directly above. Okay, so currently, neither of these two um, uh, AND gates are in the ON position because they don't have two active lamps directly above them. All right, so first we have an input coming into this uh, node. So the input is through the uh, lever here, and we can see by the wiring, the red wire will simply toggle uh, the uh, two lamps. Okay, so the one that's on will be turned off, and the other one that's off will be turned on. Yeah, just like that, simple toggle. The other lever is what initiates the entire process, uh, sends a signal into the node, and then one of two output pathways will be taken by that signal. Okay, we can see by the wiring here, through the blue wire, it'll turn on both of the uh, top lamps in both of the AND gates. Yeah, so there we go. So this way, we just sent a signal through the left AND gate, and the signal, the output signal, is represented by the uh, torch being turned on. So if we toggle this, um, change the state of our input, well, we just change the uh, path that's taken by the signal at this node. So that's the basis of um, junction boxes. They basically dictate which one of two paths will be taken by the signal that is passing through the entire uh, giant logic gate. So if we want to create many, many different output paths, then we have to put together many, many different nodes. Now, there are different layers of nodes. So the first layer always starts with one node. The second layer can have one or two nodes. Two is the maximum here. So basically, the logic is that whichever one of these two pathways is going to be taken by the signal, either through the blue wire or the red wire, or, or sorry, or the yellow wire, then the signal will be propagated to either the node on the left or the node on the right. And then in the third layer, the process continues from any one node from the second layer will send a signal to either the uh, node on the left or the node on the right in the third layer. So it just continues like that. And this is why if you have three input lines, you can generate a maximum of two to the power of uh, three, so eight output lines. The output lines, uh, the uh, endpoints here are the actual uh, torches, so the output lines are the uh, through the yellow or blue wires. All right, so the master switch, once we turn it on and thus turn on the operation of this giant logic gate, we'll end up sending a uh, signal. Now, the signal currently is being sent to just this uh, torch on the far left. But if we start manipulating some of these um, nodes, we will alter the signal pathway and other torches will be turned on instead. So for instance, if we pull this uh, lever, again, it'll toggle the two lamps here and just alter the path. Pulling the other levers will continue altering the paths. 
So you can see that this is all done in real time. We don't have to continuously send a signal through this giant uh, logic gate the way we had to before 1.3.1. So once that master lever is turned on, well, um, we don't have to turn it off and on again. We can just manipulate the inputs to generate the desired output. Yeah, so that's giant logic gates. It's as basic as that. And uh, this can definitely be compressed even more. So what we have here, this is what it looks like in its compressed form. And if we want more outputs and more inputs, we just keep adding more and more layers of nodes. So this can be as large as you possibly want. We don't always need the maximum possible outputs. So to reduce the number of outputs, we can simply get rid of some of the nodes. For instance, uh, let's come back over here. If we get rid of this node and get rid of this node, we can connect this starting node all the way down to this node down here. And thus we would only end up with six possible outputs. So we can always control how many nodes we end up with uh, at the very bottom layer and thus how many possible outputs we end up with. Now, of course, the big question is, uh, what are the ap uh, practical applications of this? How can we use this? Well, I'm going to be using this quite a bit. Uh, this is not to say that this is the only way to, uh, to build some of the um, uh, components of electronic systems. But if we take a look at some real-world schematics, they're not always that easy to, um, to understand and not necessarily that easy to uh, replicate in game in some cases. Whereas this kind of approach, even if it might be a little bit less efficient compared to uh, real-world setups, it at least is much easier to understand and much easier to uh, construct. So let's take a look at one possible practical application of this. Now in computing, in your calculator, you have arithmetic logic units which can do a variety of um, mathematical operations. You can add, subtract, divide, multiply numbers for instance. And uh, these calculations are done in binary, so they use binary numbers. However, if we want to display the uh, output, well, we prefer not to have it displayed in binary. We prefer to have it displayed in decimal. So we'll need a couple of converters. First, we'll need to convert the binary number into BCD format. So that's binary coded decimal format. And then we'll convert the BCD format into an actual um, decimal display. We can use seven segment displays or uh, other displays involving other numbers of segments. So I'm just going to show you one example then of the conversion, specifically the conversion from BCD format into decimal. Now the uh, BCD format, if you want to uh, represent a single digit, you only need four bits to uh, do that. Okay, so here if I, let's say, pulled the uh, two and four levers, so that would represent the digit six in binary. If I were to leave all of them off, that represents a digit of zero. Uh, the maximum that we can go up to is nine. So what we basically want to do is have these four inputs dictate which one of the 10 outputs we're going to generate here. <laughs> and the outputs uh, currently are just connected to uh, torches, just at the very bottom here. but. Um, if we wanted to have an actual display of the uh, digits using seven segment displays, these wires would be connected to an actual display mechanism, which I'll showcase in just a little while. But in any case, let's take a look at how this functions specifically. So again, we have that master lever at the top. Let's turn that on right away. So we see that right now we have a signal sent to the zero output. Indeed, zero is being stored in, the, uh, in BCD format. All right, so if I wanted to display, let's say, the number 9 instead, well, the 8 lever controls the first node in the first layer. If we pull it, instead of uh, sending the signal through blue wire to the node in the second layer, it'll send a signal through the other end gate, through the red wire, all the way to the node in the bottom layer. Yeah, just like that, all the way to the bottom layer. 
Now if I want 9 to light up, well, I'm going to have to toggle all of the, um, uh, the lamps on the bottom layer, and we'll do that through lever 1, just like that. So that way, the signal jumps from the first node to this node in the fourth layer, and we end up through the red wire lighting up the torch, signifying that um, it's being converted now to the digit 9. As before, this can be done on the fly. So as I try generating some other numbers here, 3 for instance, 6, 4, 5, we constantly alter the paths that the signal is uh, taking to generate the appropriate output. Yeah, so a really good example of how we can generate the um, BCD to a decimal conversion using these giant logic gates. So I'll be using these quite often. So in uh, subsequent videos, especially once I start combining various um, components and creating much larger systems, uh, you'll see me using giant uh, logic gates quite a bit. Uh, so one final thing, instead of just uh, having the output as just uh, you know, a couple of torches being turned on beside a, a number, let's take a look at what it would look like if we displayed this on a screen. So this is something I'm going to talk about in more detail in a later video. But for now, this is just to show you how we can uh, construct things. So there's a keypad here. Once you input numbers into the keypad, it'll show up on screen to, my, to the left here. Um, but instead of having the keypad uh, connecting to the mechanism below, we can extend these wires to um, this giant logic gate, this converter that we just uh, demonstrated. So if I have the number five, for instance, well, if the signal is being sent through that particular output, then the 5 will appear on screen. Uh, what's neat about uh, this particular uh, build is it allows me to input uh, multiple numbers and actually shift them the way that you see in your computer or in a calculator. And there's a clear function here as well. Yeah, so this way, um, anything that's happening internally in the ALU, uh, any calculations that are being done using binary numbers, well, you as the user will only see the final output in uh, decimal. All right, so that's all I wanted to uh, present for the moment in terms of uh, these giant logic gates. Uh, in the description box, you'll find a link to a written guide and it has schematics as well. I would strongly urge you, if uh, you're really interested in this kind of stuff and wish to build some of these uh, machinery on your own, um, to go ahead and do so, follow the schematics. There's no better way to learn than to learn it firsthand. Uh, it's one thing to watch the videos and maybe try to understand what's going on through what's being presented, but it definitely becomes a lot easier when you see a lot of this stuff firsthand and you get a chance to play around with, um, uh, with these builds. Uh, there's no world download just yet. I might provide one a little bit later, uh, but this kind of stuff is pretty easy to build as it is. So. Um, you can just follow the schematics and create your own builds. All right, guys, so that's it for now. In the next video, I'll be talking about that uh, uh, the seven-segment display um, uh, system, and we'll talk about uh, uh, how it was all uh, put together. Uh, but that's it for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.